Hello, everybody. It's great to see you again. Today is Wednesday, May 13th, and I saw some of you, a lot of you today for our Zoom meeting, and it was a lot of fun. We played some games. And we're just going to have one more Zoom on Tuesday of next week, not Wednesday, because Wednesday is going to start picking up materials from school. So I will send a reminder on Monday, and it will be Tuesday for our very last Zoom of the school year. And I really enjoyed seeing everybody during our Zoom meetings. They're a lot of fun. So think about coming next week. Let's say our prayers before we start our lesson today. Everybody get ready to pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you all my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day. For all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world, to make up for my sins, for the needs of all those for whom we pray, for the unity of all Christians, and especially for the intention of our Holy Father, the Pope. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, we love you. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. John Newman, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Put your hand on your heart and look at the flag. Say our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our student mission statement is to serve God with loving hearts, joyfully embrace our Catholic faith, and nurture individual and academic excellence. And, as we always say, go Mustangs! All right, so we're kind of winding down, and we are done with um, our letters. I sent you a picture on, I think, Monday or Tuesday. What's today, Wednesday? I think on Monday I sent you a picture of our word wall, and it's full. We're not going to be able to add any more to it. We sometimes do as the school year ends. But everybody's up there, and all our words are up there. So we aren't going to do a letter today. But I am going to review some things with you we have not had a chance to review. Um, since we aren't going to do um, letters, I want to review. I'm going to put up a number, and I want to see if you know what number this is. I'm going to start with one, and this one's a good one. What is this? Do you know what number this is? The word is there, F-I-V-E spells five. Most of us are five. There's still two friends. We have a birthday coming up really soon. And we have one that's six, but five. I think most of us know the number five. It's a hard one to write, but I think it's one you know. Here, I'm going to give you an easier one. Tell me what number is this? T-W-O, two. It's not pronounced the way we think it would be. We would think it would be two, but it's two. Two, one, two. That's the number two. Good. Let's see. I'm going to give you a good one. Here's a good one. What number is this? Seven. S-E-V-E-N spells seven. Seven. Okay, I'm trying to, we're trying to identify your numbers without doing them in order. So it's trickier. Here comes one of our friends. This is the other preschool class. How old are they when they start? Three. T-H-R-E-E, -E, three. That is our little three. That's what you started in Mrs. Berlin's class. Here is an easy one. I think most of you know this one. Sometimes we just show it as a straight line. One. O-N-E spells one. Number one. That's where we start. All right. So I gave you an easy one. I'm going to give you a hard one. What number is this? N-I-N-E spells nine. Nine. That's getting close to the, to, to the end of our regular numbers. Here's one. This is what many of you were when you started pre-K with me. You were four. F-O-U-R, four. That's how we spell four. And a couple more. Here is one that you might know. This is kind of a fun one to write, and it looks a little bit like a racetrack. I like to think of it. E-I-G-H-T. It spells eight. Eight. All right, and I don't think we did this one. It looks very similar to nine, but it is not. S-I-X spells six. And the last digit, they call these digits, because they all, this is the only one you need to know. This is a good one you know. 
Z-E-R-O, zero. Good, zero. Just checking to see how we recognize our numbers. So let's count by twos really quick since we're doing numbers. We did the fives with our eyes closed. You can try to keep working on your fives. Let's just do those blue twos really quick. To see how well you can count by twos to 20. Ready? Let's do it together. Here's my pen. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. It's counting by twos, skip counting, or evens up to 20. Not going to do the fives today. Keep practicing them. Um, but better tomorrow we're going to practice a review because the numbers were kind of a review something that we've learned earlier this year uh, today I'm going to read you some stories that are just some of my favorite stories that we haven't gotten to this year that I kind of was saving for you this one's one of them there's two I hope I have time for both but I like this one and you might know this story it's a little scholastic book and it's called why should I help why should I help it's hard for us sometimes and we talk about uh, being helpful, that was going to be one of our virtues of the month. I believe like our last one, which we didn't get to. But this is a good story about why should I help. And it's illustrated by Mark Gordon. Illustrated by, that means he did the pictures. All right. And it's written by Claire Llewellyn. That's not on the cover. That's interesting. So let's read about why should I help. Let's see, I'm going to get closer because I think these are smaller pictures. There we go. Every morning at my house, there are jobs to be done. Making the beds. Someone's making the bed, but look what happened when she starts pulling on that cover. Boing! Feeding the pets. Putting some food in the bowl. And clearing away the breakfast dish dishes. That's a lot of breakfast dishes they're clearing away. Now that we're home every day, we can do a lot of this stuff. And there are more jobs to do in the evening. So we started with the morning. Setting the table. Mom's doing like frisbees of plates. Doing the dishes again. And helping to run a bath for Charlie. Charlie's in the tub. Do you see Charlie way down there? And there's Mom. Not always the fun, most fun to do. Sometimes I don't feel like helping. I want to do something else instead, like finishing my drawing. When a teacher says, Susie, please help to clean up. Everybody's cleaning up, not Susie. Sometimes I don't want to help because I feel like I want to watch TV. And then her mom says, would you, would you take this coffee up to dad for me? She doesn't look like she wants to do that. Play with the cat. She'd rather do that. But please pick up your things, Susie. Lots of toys on the floor. I don't think she's playing very nicely with the cat. She's dropping a little rock on it. Or talk to my friend, Ben. Susie, could you help me fold this sheet? That poor dad needs help folding the sheet. Why should I help other people? No one ever helps me. No, Dad, I'm busy. That's what she's saying about the sheet. Dad says, everyone needs a helping hand now and then. Remember what happened when you fell off your bike. Can you see Susie on her bike? She looks like she's doing a flip. That nice boy helped you back home. He took the bike, the wheels all bent. And she's hurt, she's crying. So she, she got helped. And what happened when you forgot your costume at last year's Christmas party? Everybody's in a costume but Susie. Mom rode home during her lunch hour to get it. Does that look like fun when mom's riding on that bike to get Susie's costume? And do you remember what happened that day you lost Squeaky? Squeaky, I think, is a hamster. I think Squeaky's right here. But, ah, Squeaky's gone! Ben, Grandpa, Grandma, and I searched for him the whole afternoon. And look what they found behind the rock. Squeaky. It was all true. I did sometimes need a helping hand. And I do suppose other people need one too. When they're busy, they need a helping hand. Or when they're tired. Look, Mom does not want to cook. 
or a just a bit slow because look what's going off his head. He says, I'll get it. Susie's going to get it. And people help one another all the time. Susie says, would you like to sit down on the bus? That's a mom with a baby in her tummy. And so have you've lost your dad, have you? A little police officer's helping him find his dad. And there's another way to help. Thank you for taking Jesse out for me. Jesse's a little dog. So I'm going to help people too. Helping people makes me feel grown up and gives me a good feeling inside. And sometimes, just sometimes, there's an extra bonus for helping. Like the time I went shopping for my grandma and she had extra time to make some pancakes. And she says, mm, my favorite. That's a good thing. And because I fed the fish for Ben, her friend Ben, she's feeding her fish from the pond, he brought me back a present from his vacation. Do you see the sombrero that Susie's wearing on her head? She likes it. All sorts of people need help out there to give someone a helping hand. Who knows? The next person to need help might be you. Look at the puppy. He's about to fall and he's trying to catch him, but that man's going to help out. It's probably animal control. So that's just a reminder that we're all at home and we can all help. We always talk about now that you're five or almost five, you're able to help mom and dad a lot, especially with brothers and sisters. So just a reminder that you all can help. You're not a baby anymore. All right. I have one last book. Let me see if I have how much time I have. I haven't done too bad. And it's a book I really like. And it's by Mo Willems. And he's pigeon books. He does the Why the Pigeon Got on the Bus. And I like Mo Willems. That's his story. And the um, the and it's by, by Amber Wren. Mo Willems and Amber Wren. And it's I like it because it's about music and discovering music. I grew up and really liked music. And it made me really like, I like to sing, but this is a little bit different. And you might find someday that you like music, and it might be because of a reason like this. It's a really neat story, and I wanted to save it. And here is actually a symphony by Franz Schubert that somebody heard when they were young, and it really made them want to do music. So that's there. So I'm going to read you a story, and it's about finding things that we like. And the story is called because. And you say, what does that mean? Well, you'll see. It's called Because. Really neat pictures, too, in this story. Because a man named Ludwig wrote beautiful music a long, long time ago, a man named Franz was inspired to create his own. It made him want to make his own music. And these are pe people that were here a long time ago. Because many years later, People wanted to hear Franz's beautiful music. They formed an orchestra. And that's with people with all kinds of instruments. Because a man had practiced since he was a kid, he was asked to join the orchestra. What is he practicing? A violin. Very hard to do, but since he was little, he learned how to play. Let me get my hands up. Because a woman studied night and day, she, too, was asked to play in this orchestra. She plays percussion. We talk about that. Because many others loved and practiced their instruments, a oboe, a cello, a French horn, and a flute, there were enough musicians to fill that orchestra. And because someone created a poster about Franz's music, he's putting it on the computer, Tickets were sold. They put up posters. Because the train conductor stopped the train at the Grand Concert Hall, the orchestra conductor arrived. The conductor is the one that puts all the music together. Because the orchestra librarian had copies of the score, copies of all the music, the orchestra could rehearse. That means practice. We practice songs. And they have to practice together so it sounds right. Because workers checked the lights and the seats and swept the floors, 
the grand hall was ready, ready for people to come into those seats. Because the time had come, the ushers opened the doors. So people are going to come to that concert. And because someone's uncle caught a cold, he's not feeling well, someone's aunt had an extra ticket for someone special. So she's still going to go. She's going to take someone special. Because the usher helped the aunt and her special guest, they found their seats. So there's the aunt and the special guest. Because everyone was there to hear the beautiful music. They were sitting there. It was quiet. And they listened. There's the orchestra. And they're standing and getting ready to play. And you can see the conductors. This guy right here is going to stand up on that little box. And this is a picture of what the orchestra sounds like, playing Schubert's music, Franz Schubert's music. It's kind of a cool picture, but it kind of makes you feel like you can hear it. I like that. In row C, seat 14, sat the girl with the uncle's ticket. She heard the beautiful music written by the man named Franz, and it changed her. Really liked it. The girl was changed. You see, she's sort of still hearing that music in her head as she walks out of the theater. From that moment on, the girl learned everything she could about music because it fed her. See, she's pretending to conduct all her stuffed animals. Soon, she started to write music. She's playing a piano. She's growing up. She's playing a violin. Because like Franz, the young woman had something to share. She's growing up. She's playing her flute. Over time, the woman became very good because she worked very hard. And one night, her music was discovered because she was also very lucky. Then she was invited to perform her music at the grand concert hall, the one that she went to when she was little. Her composition, which is her music, was dedicated to the uncle in row C, seat 14. Remember, her uncle was sick, and there he is, well, coming to see her concert because it was his ticket that brought her here. So there's the aunt and the uncle in the same seats. And it says, and that night, someone else was changed. Someone else left and was feeling that music. And here's the poster. It says, world premiere, symphony number one. And the name of the symphony is The Cold. Because that's what the uncle had. Remember, a cold. And that's how it happened. Someone else was changed. Someone else heard that music. So on this side, one day I'd like to have my daughter play this, is the symphony that that girl wrote called The Cold. And it's by Hilary Currington. That's what she wrote. So it's kind of a neat story about how something can change you. It doesn't have to be music. Music is something I like. It can be anything. Some people feel that with sports. And some people feel that with writing stories or drawing pictures. So it's kind of a cool story that this starts when they're your age. This can start. You can find that you like to do something special. All right. Got to want to see how much time I've taken up so far do a song that I think you all like and we haven't done a song oh I didn't turn on my speaker we haven't done a, a, this song for a while and I think we're gonna start with it because it's kind of be, just because it's kind of fun and it's one that you like so I'm trying to get connected some, trying to get some of our favorite stories up um, can we walk here we go and I think I sort of let's make sure I didn't mute that turn that back on all right Let's do this song, and I know that um, Freddy Frog wants to do it, and I think some of you probably are missing it. So what number is that? Number 12? Yeah, here we go. He's going to do it with you. Three Little Fishies. Down in the meadow in a little baby pool, swam three little fishies and a mama fishy too. 
swims. Let the mama says she swim if you can. And they swim and they swim all over the dam. Boom, boom, did him, dad, and what a man chew. Boom, boom, did him, dad, and what a man chew. Boom, boom, did him, dad, and what a man chew. And they swim and they swim all over the dam. Stop, said the mama fish, she could get lost. The three little fishies didn't want to be boss. The three little fishies went off on a spree and they swam and they swam right out to the sea. Boom, boom, did him, dad, and what a man chew. Can you do it? Boom, boom, did him, dad, and what a man chew. Tap, tap, boom, clap, clap. Did him, dad, and what a man chew. And they swam and they swam all over the dam. Where did they end up? They're out to sea. They're having a good time, but they did not listen to their mommy. We had the little fishies. Here's a lot of fun. We'll swim in the sea till the day is done. They swam and they swam and it was a lark. Till all of a sudden they saw a shark. Boom, boom, did him, dad, and what him and chew. Boom, boom, did him, dad, and what him and chew. Boop, boop, did him, dad, and what him and chew. And they swam and they swam all over the dam. How oh, cried the little fishies, look at the whales. And quick as they could, they furred on their tails. And back to the pool in the meadow, they swam. And they swam and they swam back over the dam. Boop, boop, did him, dad, and what him and chew. Tap, tap, did him, dad, and what him and chew. And they swam and they swam back over the dam. Do you think they learned a lesson, Freddy? Did they listen to Mommy? Did they have some fun? They got back. That's one of our favorite songs, another kind of silly song. Didn't really have a lot to do with today, but I just wanted to get some of our songs in before the end of the year. The last thing we're going to do, and Freddie wants to do it with you, he reminded me, is we're going to pray the Hail Mary in honor of Mary, our mother, because it's May, and it's Mary's month. So we're going to make the sign of the cross. Freddie's going to do it too. Ready? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you next time. I miss you. And I love you all, and I hope you're having a great time at home. Bye-bye.